So I've been asked to give an input on um, agribusiness leadership and particularly how might multinational agribusinesses, national policymakers, local actors, entrepreneurs and advo advocacy groups collaborate to improve the outcome of high and low income regions. Um, and I really believe there is an opportunity here for immediate change. However, to, to, to realize this agribusiness leadership will require all of us to have a holistic, transformational and collaborative systems-wide approach um, in order to, to change the current um, system. Um, and in doing so, to change our mindset from what's my agenda to what's our agenda in, in the, the service um, of Ravi Kumar, who I'm going to come and talk about in just a second. So there are three points that I'd like to make up front. The first is that by all of us focusing on solving growers' real and immediate problems or obstacles to change, their pain points, um, we can have an immediate and lasting a positive benefit for them and for society and the planet at scale. The second is that by doing that and having that common agenda and focusing and understanding each other's capabilities and inviting new partners to support us where that is necessary, we can build both trust as well as have um, a focus on our common agenda and in service of addressing those farmers' pain points. And more broadly, by taking this holistic approach, we can have a benefit to society, to the planet and to shareholders and contribute to delivering the sustainable development goals um, for an increasing population um, by 2030. So let me focus first on where the need is and the opportunity is both greatest. And that's with the smallholder farmer. Um, and I'm now inviting Ravi Kumar to join our forum. Um, I met Ravi Kumar um, in Bihar in Northern India, um, having spent a couple of hours in a rather rickety old um, uh, Jeep um, making our way out to, to meet him on his farm. He's a smallholder farmer. Um, he grows corn um, primarily, um, and he's got about two hectares. And I had gone out to see him because he was one of our customers. Um, and it was, he greeted us with this wonderful smile, as you can see, but, um, and it was also an opportunity for us to tell, uh, for him to tell us um, what he was doing and why. He was growing our corn hybrid on, about, on one of his two hectares, and yet he was incredibly happy and satisfied with the outcome he was getting. So the big question was why? Digging underneath this and understanding it, he said that if the rains don't come when he plants, he's going to lose the investment he's made in the seed and he's not going to be able to feed his family, and nobody should be asked to do that. Now, I heard the same story repeated, talking to different retailers, growers, and my team through the course of the two to three weeks sorry, two to three days that I was traveling in this region. I also knew the government in India wanted banks and insurance companies to get much more actively involved in agriculture um, and that Reliance, um, the major uh, telecommunications company, were getting ready to roll out affordable smartphones and 4G network across Pan India, which was gonna make a huge difference to access in terms of knowledge um, and to markets and various other things. Long story short, um, through um, the knowledge we'd also gained from um, a, a, an insurance product we'd launched in Australia, as well as what the Syngenta Foundation had done in Kenya, um, we put an insurance offer together for this farmer. Every bag of seed that he or she bought, when they ripped it open, there would be a small card inside, which they would scan with their smartphone and be enrolled in our rain insurance program. We then use satellite data to know whether or not over that two to three week period, they should be paid out or not, um, and therefore significantly reduce their risk. And if they should get paid out, we'd send them a QR code on their phone and they could go to the retailer and they could get another bag of seed. Instantly, allowing this farmer to be able to purchase more of better quality seed to increase his productivity, and importantly, to do so in a sustainable way. Because we knew he was then opening his bag of seed as soon as he scanned the card. We could then engage with him to educate him how to grow that seed in a way that was allowing him to realize the full potential um, and to do so in a sustainable way, whether it was the planting distance, the crop protection protocol, or when to harvest. So using tools and imagination and thinking holistically about the pain point of Ravi Kumar and putting in place a rain insurance offer, we were able to make a significant contribution 
to his life and his livelihoods, as well as to increase the productivity um, and access to good quality corn. So the question that this poses is, how can we do this better at scale? Yeah. Um, and so, and so the benefit, how can the benefit be amplified? Um, and I think here is where governments play an incredibly important role. 51 governments influence two thirds or $570 billion per annum of the global food production today. And that was from the WEF report in January. Um, and we need to work together to ask um, governments, work with governments to refocus from um, input subsidies, which often are used today, to focus on subsidies that support education, as well as investment in infrastructure, such as water, irrigation, roads and storage, um, to un underpin productivity and access to markets for growers such as Ravi Kumar, and in a way that will set up for a sustainable and a robust supply chain um, of the future. By increasing knowledge, we can also reduce waste, um, and, in, in, and also by increasing infrastructure, we can do the same thing, a reward for everybody. Collaboration too, in the, in the context of blended finance, would make a significant difference to being able to amplify this sort of offer across growers such as Ravi Kumar, not only in corn, not only in India, but pan emerging markets such as Africa, Central America, and the rest of Asia Pacific. And NGOs also play a significant role um, in terms of public-private partnerships, but also in terms of foundations as it relates to ensuring that their customers also um, have the opportunity to benefit from these sort of initiatives. And as you've seen from earlier, contribute to actually sparking the idea in the commercial organizations as well. So that's the smallholder farmer. Now turning to developed markets such as the US. Here farmers are clearly in a very diff different position. That although many may be subsidized, they enjoy economies of scale, access to cheaper financing um, and technologies and are far more knowledgeable, which means their productivity is three or four times greater than smallholder farmer Ravi Kumar. So what role can they play in terms of increasing not only their wealth, but also um, ensuring a sustainable supply chain. And for me, this touches on the, the same theme around carbon and around the role of soil in enabling um, uh, the, ad the addre addressing of the um, uh, carbon emissions and the opportunity that we have of rewarding growers for sustainable and regenerative practices that reduce carbon um, or uh, enable carbon sequestration into soil. Um, and to do so, they do need financial incentives. So what is the role of government, of policymakers, of, of, of um, other um, key institutions in enabling carbon as part of um, an income source for these farmers, um, where they can demonstrate that they are adopting um, sustainable farming practices, not only for their benefit, but for the benefit of society as well. Both smallholder and large farming operations do, however, have one additional important role to play. Um, and that is in providing ingredients for healthier diets for, um, uh, for everyone in the global food chain. And this is also where consumers need to play a big role in, in seeking this out. Because let's face it, um, supermarkets and um, will stock on their shelves what consumers want to buy. And so there is the need for education around healthier diets, which has been exemplified earlier, um, in the adoption of those diets in order for sustainable change to happen throughout the whole of the food system ecosystem. So in closing, um, ag uh, agribusiness leadership can be achieved. It can be achieved now by seeking out and aligning behind common goals and principles and powering up our collaboration to address the key grower pain points, which simultaneously can improve livelihoods and with an immediate and positive benefit on uh, the triple bottom line and the achievement of our sustainable development goals for the benefit of everyone. Thank you very much.